A record heat wave is fueling devastating wildfires across much of the southern Mediterranean and eastern Europe tonight. Hundreds of blazes have broken out, many of them multiplying in recent days. Italy, Croatia, Greece, Bulgaria, North Macedonia and Ukraine are tackling dozens of wildfires. Scientists have linked them largely to the intense heat, which they say is made more likely and more severe by global warming. Now, Greece's prime minister says that the country is facing an unprecedented environmental crisis. The fires have wiped out swathes of forests, destroyed infrastructure, and even threatened a key archaeological site. Get out quickly. That was the message to residents in this community just 30 kilometers from Athens. Firefighters have been struggling to get this latest blaze near the Greek capital under control. Just hours earlier, flames came close to the site of the ancient Olympics. An all-out battle ultimately saved one of the country's most treasured attractions. And scores of fires are still raging across Greece. Rescuers are exhausted after working nearly non-stop. Many blame climate change as one of the main triggers of the fires. They are hitting many regions dependent on tourism at a crucial time, which were already battered by the pandemic. In Turkey, a wall of fire surged toward a huge power plant on the Aegean coast. Thousands of residents fled. By land and by sea. Some refused to go. If this gets more extreme, we will leave, but we don't want to be the first. We were born in this region and have always lived here. We have our workplaces, our flats. I also work in tourism. What should I do? Where do you want us to go at our age? We live here. This is our home. Our last solution would have been to throw ourselves into the sea, but thank God it didn't happen here. So we stayed home and kept our phones on. Eventually, after nearly half a day, the power plant was spared. Turkey has seen its worst wildfires in decades. They have scorched untold hectares of land. In some areas, temperatures have topped 40 degrees for days. On the Italian island of Sicily, dozens of fires have also been burning. Extreme heat has fueled these blazes, but officials here say arson is to blame as well. With summer half over, there seems little respite in sight. For Italy, for Greece, and for much of southern Europe. And we have team coverage of the wildfires tonight. I'm joined by DW correspondents Julia Hahn in Milas in southwestern Turkey and Florian Schmitz, who joins us from the city of Thessaloniki in Greece. To both of you, welcome. Florian, let me start with you. Um, how is the country holding up tonight? Well, it's uh, 38 degrees uh, and it's 10 o'clock. So you can imagine the fatigue um, and uh, the exhaustion uh, that the country is going through at the moment. Even for the Greeks, these temperatures are unbearable. The intensity of the sun, uh, you can feel that it's that it's harmful. So people stay inside. You see empty roads, uh, especially here in, uh, in Thessaloniki. The touristic sites, this is what the government decided, will remain closed during the hottest hours of the day. This was definitely a very difficult decision for Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis to make uh, after the corona lockdown that hit the country really hard um, in its economy. Uh, to him, the most important thing was to, to guide uh, Greece into a short but uh, smooth and, uh, and lucrative tourist season. But with these fires and, uh, and these extreme temperatures, uh, it's very hard for people, of course, to enjoy the beauty of the country. And Julie, we've been talking all week and the situation in Turkey has been going from bad to worse. Is it the same tonight? 
Well, I'm in front of the power plant mentioned there in your report here in Milas at the Aegean coast. The situation there seems to be under control after fires spread to this critical site yesterday, threatening the electricity supply of nearly 800,000 people here in the area. We were not allowed access to the plant uh, to see the damages caused by the fire, but authorities said the main building, the main unit wasn't damaged. Now, the entire area here had to be evacuated last night. We also had to leave our hotel. People were uh, trying to get out, only taking the most necessary things with them. And now we are being told by the local authorities here that this evacuation order has not been lifted yet. And that is probably because the overall situation remains very tense. There are at least 12 active fires still here in Milas, where I am, but also in the neighboring province of Antalya. So firefighting operations here in Turkey continue. And Florian, the fires there in Greece, many of them are close to densely populated urban areas. So how are authorities responding? How are they dealing with people and fire being so close together? Well, we've seen the images and the we've seen the footage from from Athens. There are thick clouds hanging over the city and uh, people breathing uh, to toxic fumes in the Greek capital. So authorities keep uh, sending messages, informing people about uh, uh, about the, the health hazards, uh, informing people about behavior, not uh, not making open fires, no barbecue, and really staying inside. The authorities really depend on the uh, collaboration of the people, but still fires keep breaking out. We've seen these uh, dramatic um, uh, images from uh, from Olympia, from the Asian side of Olympia, where the firefighters don't seem to be able to control the flames. On the contrary, uh, the flames are actually um, uh, extending. The fires are extending um, uh, in this very dry area. Today alone, uh, 19 villages around um, uh, around Olympia needed to be evacuated. So you can so you can see how uh, how much impact the the fire has on the people here, losing their livelihoods every day. And firefighters really not just battling the flames, but also logistics. Yeah, and Julia, it's much the same situation where you are. And we know that Turkish President Erdogan has promised to do anything and everything that is needed, but he's also facing some criticism, isn't he? Well, the criticism directed towards the president and his government is growing louder with every day the fires here continue to burn. It's coming from the opposition. It's coming from local people here who have lost everything in the flames. And it's coming from those who are taking to social media to express their anger. Some have even called for the president to step down. Now, people are saying the authorities here in Turkey reacted too late when the blazes erupted more than a week ago, that they were not well equipped enough in time in terms of fire fighting infrastructure, that they had hardly any water dropping planes ready, although they knew that this area is prone to wildfires. Now, the number of uh, firefighting planes, helicopters, firefighters has increased in recent days after Turkey got help from abroad. But the government strategy is to reject criticism or to redirect it. OK, DW correspondents Julia Hahn in Turkey and Florian Schmitz in Greece. To both of you, thank you.